Hi, Tyler Stallman, longtime Mac user, lifelong gamer. Unfortunately, those two things haven't always gone great together, but we have new M1 Macs that are better equipped than ever to game on. I'm gonna talk about the best games that you can pick up for them. They are not all new because that's just part of gaming on a Mac is we don't get all the first AAA titles, but there are lots of really good games out there. I'm gonna talk about casual games that are great for anyone to get into, more creative, in-depth games, online games, and we'll wrap up with some more graphic intensive stuff so we can push this a little further. <laughs> I'm gonna start with the one that I've probably spent the most time on this year, and that's Grindstone. I get it through my Apple Arcade subscription where you pay a few bucks a month and you get access to a ton of games. I fall in love with it first for its art and creativity, but the gameplay also delivers too. There are a million games out there like this where you kind of stack things and then destroy them and uh, then they fall down, but this one's actually got some heart to it. It's designed well. You don't have to pay extra to win. It just has great gameplay, very well designed, and it keeps you hooked for hours. Also good on the iPhone. Now I got a decent run, but I need a shield. Boom. If you're into tower defense, check out Kingdom Rush, and if you're not already into it, go check it out, and then you will be. I've played a ton of these before, but Kingdom Rush Frontiers is new to me, and it's like, it's pretty easy to get into, and then easy to go far deep into, which is, you know, kind of what you enjoy about a casual game. You can just dip in for like five minutes, come back to it later, and just keep going. I love these games. Oh man, I totally forget all the strategy in this game. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to come back to this. Next up is Donut County, which is not a very long game, actually. It's pretty quick to get through, which is perfect for me because I don't have much time these days. But its art is great. It surprisingly has a story that you end up caring about a bit. And basically, you're sucking objects into a hole and trying to destroy the world in a, in a very weird way. It spawned some knockoffs, but Donut County is the original. I definitely think you should check it out. We'll gradually transition from the more casual to more creative in-depth games, starting with Untitled Goose Game. This is from publisher Panic, and I feel like you can't talk about Mac gaming without talking about Panic. They are classic Macintosh developers. They've been around for a long time. Like their app Transmit was my file transfer app 20 years ago, whatever it was. And now they are a real player in games. So if you haven't already heard about Untitled Goose Game, you just wander around a town harassing people as a goose. <laughs> I think the word for it has gotta be delightful. Like it's just this really cute, funny world. And leads me to another game from Panic that I absolutely love. This is my favorite game I've played on a Mac, maybe ever, and that's Firewatch. This is the kind of experience that reminds you that video games are art, like fantastic writing, great visuals, and it, like the voice acting and the audio, is fantastic. And by the way, the new M1 MacBook Pros have such good speakers. It is the best audio experience you can have on a gaming computer. So, I mean, you know, I don't buy my computers primarily to game. I'm gonna buy the best computer that's gonna get my work done and then I'm gonna use it to game. So the fact that these sound so much better than most PCs is really wonderful. By the way, this shirt is so much more pink on camera than I realized. Um, this is really, it's, this is bright. <laughs> By now, you've probably heard a lot of people talk about how great Hades is. It was a lot of people's game of the year last year, and it's like an indie, not AAA, but very, very good dungeon crawl. The game has that three-quarter overhead isometric view, and basically you're the prince of the underworld and you're trying to escape it. Another example of great art direction, acting, and gameplay that all come together for a pretty amazing experience. And it's such a good example of why the idea of AAA doesn't always necessarily make sense. Like the best games can still use traditional design language and still deliver in all the gameplay areas that matter. If you're in the mood for a 2D platformer, you gotta check out Dead Cells. You basically keep dying over and over again and keep coming back to life, tackling the same level, but 
different. It's evolving as you do. You gain powers, collect items. One of those games that you think is much more simpler when you start it than when you're a few levels in. When I first played it, one thing that really stuck out was how it got away from some traditional things you take for granted in a game, like no checkpoints. You just keep restarting. You kind of have to play it to understand that mechanic, but it feels really natural once you've done it for a while. All right, let's pause for a second and talk about the real star of this video, because it's not me and it's not my extremely pink sweater. It's this microphone. Now you've heard blue microphones before because they are everywhere. They're used by streamers, gamers, podcasters, and voiceover professionals. They're Snowball and Yeti mics I'm sure you've seen around. They're super easy to use, professional sounding USB microphones. This is the Bluebird SL and it can take your home studio or streaming setup to full broadcast studio quality. It's an XLR microphone with a large diaphragm cardioid condenser capsule that delivers incredible detail and rich harmonic audio for a professional quality of audio. And it's not just gonna make your voice sound great, it also has a really low noise floor, so it's not introducing any additional buzz or hum into the signal. It comes with this built-in shock mount, so no matter how hard you smash your keyboard, the vibrations don't travel into the mic, which can create this earthquake kind of sound. And I've got it mounted to the compass boom arm, which I've got to say, this is like the nicest boom I've used. Like it looks great on camera and it works extremely well. It hides the cable up top. And if I was using this to record say a podcast or, or something where you're not going to see my face, I'd use this pop filter, which can help the plosives from not coming through and I can speak directly into it. The Bluebird has a 100 hertz low cut filter to help with the clarity of your sound. And it also has a negative 20 decibel pad. So your stream will never distort. So check out the link in the description below. See which blue microphone is right for you and get a closer look at the Bluebird SL. All right, now we get to my favorite genre of game, which is like action adventure. This is Pathless and it's this free running archery game. And it's just all about like building up fluidity and momentum. And it has this really great energy to it. I love exploring it. The world is just, it's a super cool world. And you know that feeling of like, when you just are in a state of flow and you're being competent at something, that's kind of like what makes this fun is when you're just having a big run of success. I'm a huge fan of Final Fantasy, so when I saw Fantasian was coming out, I got excited. What really sold it to me and might sell it to you is looking at the behind the scenes and how they created this. It's basically photography of real world dioramas with 3D characters added inside. It's a classic turn-based RPG. So if you're looking for a good modern one that is bringing some new ideas to the table, it's definitely worth checking out. <laughs> This one I'm gonna recommend because maybe it's for you, but it wasn't for me. And that's Cuphead. Like this game looks amazing. The art is just absolutely incredible. And that's why I bought it. The music is fantastic. There's so much going for it, but it's really hard. Like I actually just found myself not wanting to keep playing because I kept dying so much. So I would definitely recommend checking out Cuphead just to see how great it is, see if it's for you. But if you have as little patience as I do for getting good at a challenging game, then, you know, maybe just watch the trailer. And by the way, a, a little secret, just between you and me, now that I'm older and have not a lot of free time, I play almost every single game on easy mode. And I know that gives away all my credibility, but this is what happens is you run out of time and you still want to finish games. I just want to have fun and time to play through as many great games as I can. So let's keep moving. Another indie darling is Inside, which is a puzzle platformer and very dark. <laughs> it's got a very specific look to it, but it's expanding on the ideas that the developer Playdead had in their earlier game Limbo, and both went on to be considered some of the greatest games ever. Like a lot of people really love these games, so you should check them out, see if they are for you. They're not for everybody. Both games are undeniably amazing. And now some online focused games. Now there's so many that have been established for a long time that you probably already 
play. If you want to know if your games are already working for M1 Max, the best resource is, is to go to Apple Silicon Games and just search for whatever it is you want to play. There you can already see people's specific tests, what frames per second they were able to get at what resolution. I'm not going to do all those tests myself, but there is a great video from Max Tech where they test drive all of them on the M1 Max. But you should know that you definitely can play Minecraft. No big surprise there. And like infinitely playable. I mean, I install Minecraft on everything I buy. Fortnite, I'm terrible at Fortnite, so I would never show you myself playing it. I'm only gonna show you other people's clips. World of Warcraft has an M1 native version. And if there are some Windows games that are missing, you can check out if it can run on Crossover, which is basically a way to, you know, play Windows games on your Mac. That's for you to explore. If I'm getting serious about a game, I'm gonna play it on my console. But okay, speaking of serious games, I do wanna try out some more AAA titles just to see how they do on here. So if you wanna push it, what can it handle? Let's take a look at Asphalt Mine. This is a game that Apple loves to show off because, you know, it looks pretty good. It's a like real racing game that runs great on the Mac. I mean, it runs perfectly. Like the frame rate here is incredible. Is it the best looking racing game I've ever played? No, but it's definitely good. Like the car models are nice, the lighting's nice. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a good looking game for sure. Like I say, it runs flawlessly on this M1 Max. Now, what kind of Mac gaming video would this be if we didn't go over the Mac game of the year? And that is Myst, a perfect recreation of the original. It was all lovingly handcrafted in Unreal Engine, and it looks really good. I mean, I remember how good the original Myst looked, um, <laughs> which it does not anymore. But comparing this, it's like, wow, we have come so far. This is all the most obvious thing I could possibly say about this game. I mean, it's designed to make you feel this way, but yeah, we have. It's amazing. I was a little surprised actually. So again, this is on the M1 Max. Can't really get a better Mac. And if I went to the graphics and I can't turn them up very high, like quality presets high, apply that. And the game started to like stutter and lag. I can't play it at high, which like this is made for Mac. Like this is M1 Apple Silicone optimized. So I, I would have thought the best Mac computer could handle it, but just so you know, it can't. So instead, oh, and never mind Epic. Instead, I've been playing it at medium and that works just fine. Looks just fine. I mean, it looks it looks great. Anyway, I'm still at the very beginning of this game. I'm gonna have to watch some walkthroughs so I can get through it quickly. I guess there's people out there that don't know what Mist is. It's like a click adventure. You're just stuck on an island. You don't know why you're there and you go around solving puzzles. And there's no one else around, just uh, people trapped in books. Actually, I read the Mist book when I was really young and loved that. Okay, next, this, this isn't properly gaming on the Mac, but if you have a Mac, you can do it. I wanted to know if I could play Halo Infinite. Now, I realize this is not gaming on the Mac anymore. This is streaming a game, but hey, is Xbox's cloud gaming good enough? And I'm gonna do it with a PS5 controller. So before I do, let's just confirm that I've got fast internet here. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, it's decent. 580 down and 80 megabytes up. Okay, well, that's good for Canada. I realize it's slow other places, but all right, let's see what we can do. By the way, I really want this to work because I only have a PS5. I don't have an Xbox. So this is the only way I'm gonna be able to play Halo Infinite. All right, so what really matters here is how bad is the lag? I mean, there's gonna be some lag for sure, but can I play it? All right, well, you know, it looks, it looks pretty good. Like, you know, I can't say it's not a little bit fuzzy. It doesn't look like it would on a 4K TV. All right, but I won't know until I've got somebody to shoot. All right, it's, um, I mean, it's reasonably responsive. I just, I mean, I killed some guys. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's right on the edge. Like, I can feel the lag. I would not want to play multiplayer like this because I would instantly be dead. But the campaign, could I play the campaign? All right, I'm able to kill grunts. That's, uh, at least there's that. Oh, here we go. I mean, there's a lot happening here and it looks, it looks good. Like on this screen, it, right now, this just looks pretty sharp. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, that was actually not good. Okay, so here's what I'll say. If you're gonna play Halo for the story and the experience and just play the campaign and play it on easy mode like I do, then this totally works. Like this is, this is good enough. I don't think it'd work over Wi-Fi. I tried that earlier and it was a lot worse, but yeah, right now, this is good. And while you've got your controller out, you should check out Oceanhorn 2. 
It's very Zelda inspired, if you can call it uh, inspired. It feels a lot like playing Zelda basically, but honestly, the graphics look great. I mean, a little you know better than Zelda actually, like better reflections and textures and stuff. I don't know if I can endorse Oceanhorn 2 because I only really bought it as like a tech demo of what a Mac can do, but uh, I'd love to hear it from you. Like tell me in the comments, is this a game worth playing? Can you recommend it to me? And then you should go watch some of the other videos where I've done a much deeper dive on these new M1 Macs and what they can really do. So I'll see you guys over there and in the next video.